hit the red thing. Right. Right. Okay. okay. Yep, hit that one. Thanks. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Johnny, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, good. Okay, well, let me, we, I was just calling the meeting to order. Um, Councilman Terrell is on the phone with us, and Councilman Hall will be coming in in just a minute. But uh, we have Councilman Folk and Vice Mayor Ellers and myself, and it's good to see everyone here this afternoon. Um, we have a special guest with us today, and um, I'd like to introduce Alex Lee with Southwell. Alex is going to give us some information um, about what's happening in Tift County with regard to our COVID numbers. And, um, and Alex, are you going to be okay with us asking questions as we go through? Um, I'd also like to acknowledge that we have some, um, some of our friends from the county. We have Commissioner Melissa Hughes and Commissioner Buck Rigdon, and we have folks with our EMA back here. So thank you all very much for being with us this afternoon. Um, we have members of various members of the press. We have Adam Hathaway, who's with our school board. Um, we have several other members of the community that are here to hear what we have to say and what you have to say, Alex. So, um, so the information I think is going to be very important to, uh, to share with the community. Uh, before we get started, are there any questions or comments from the council? And then I'll turn everything over to Alex to go over. Everything, everybody good? Okay. Johnny, you good? Can you hear okay? Yeah, good. Okay. All right, Alex, I'll turn the floor over to you and let you get started. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah we, we, can hear you. we can hear you, Johnny. Okay. Okay. All right, I just want to thank everybody for inviting me here to give a brief update on how things are looking at our hospital here in Tifton as well as our situation down in our hospital in Adel and just kind of the whole climate of COVID and uh, how it's uh, spreading or containing um, throughout the different areas in South Georgia. Um, so I'd like to start off with a little visual. If you look on the screen, you can see this is from the DPH website that I pulled this morning, um, and it lists the uh, COVID rates per 100,000 population. And you can see, I don't know if you guys can really see, but Tiff County is that dark, dark red, um, and then all the surrounding counties are pretty orange. So um, Tiff County is currently, I'll say, surging. Um, if you can see, the state of Georgia as a whole is surging. Um, the state of Georgia, as well as Tiff County, experienced at the time the largest peak back in end of July, early August. Um, and since then, our numbers uh, kind of fell um, throughout the, uh, the coming months. And um, as unfortunately we're expecting, as the colder weather starts to roll in, um, we're seeing a resurgence in um, some of the spread of COVID. And the number for the state is higher than it was back in July. And then Tiff County is um, almost to where it was back in July. Um, so um, this is a graph of the hospital. Um, this shows the number of positive patients that we saw in outpatient. Those are the blue bars. And then the red dots and the red line is our admissions. And so, as you can see, in July, um, I think the week of July 11th, that was our heaviest admission week at the hospital with um, 41. And um, this past week of December, we had 46. So our trend is ticking upwards. And this past week was the highest admit uh, for COVID patients that we've had since this uh, began. And um, um, you know, a lot of people ask, well, what does that actually mean for um, us um, in the community? Um, I don't, um, the hospital is challenged um, with available beds. Um, we're building a new tower that will help expand the capacity to treat patients, um, as well as create a larger ER emergency room. But unfortunately, that project's about 10 months from completion. Um, and so we're kind of stuck uh, with the rooms that we have. And so, uh, COVID patients tend to require a longer length of stay at the hospital. And so a lot of patients where we're able to come in and get them out in a couple of days, uh, the COVID patients are by and large taking four and five days on average um, before they'll be able to be discharged. So as we get more COVID, that means we have more patients sitting in our hospital longer, which means we're not getting as much throughput as we would like. And um, we're not necessarily discharging as many patients that we're admitting. And so what that does is create a bottleneck. And unfortunately, um, some of our ER volumes or wait times are longer than um, we would like them to be. And so, um, you know, people ask, why does, how does COVID impact us or the hospital? And while you may not directly have COVID, if you or a loved one or family or friend ever go to the ER, you could be impacted that way by longer wait times because 
just the impact of COVID and how it trickles throughout the whole organization. Um, and then this is a demographic based off our hospital numbers on um, kind of the age of admissions and the age of deaths. Um, and you can see predominantly the deaths occur um, from age 50 and up. Um, and then admissions really go from age pretty much 30 to up. Uh, 18 to 29, we'd have too many, and then less than 18, it was very rare. Um, so COVID is impacting everybody. I know there's been some misnomers that COVID only impacts the elderly, but um, I know many people um, at a young age who have been impacted by COVID and been in the, in the hospital, and I've witnessed firsthand patients in the ICU younger than myself uh, struggling uh, for life. Um, and so um, even though COVID you know, predominantly impacts the elderly, it is something that we should all be vigilant and aware of um, to make sure that we can contain the spread of it. Um, and then this is just a snapshot of today. Um, we currently have 37 COVID positive patients in our hospital. Seven of those patients are in our ICU. Four of those patients are in our step down unit. And then 26 are in our medical floors. Um, and of the seven patients in ICU, five, five of them are in ventilators. And so, what this is telling you uh, or the community is COVID is out there. It's not as um, intense or severe as it was back in April and March, but it is more widespread. And so back uh, when this first started, our ICU was at capacity um, and overflowing in a step down. Now we have a little bit of capacity in ICU, but it's mostly on our medical floors. And so um, these patients are, like I said, are patients that they're not sick enough to be on a ventilator, but still will need to be hospitalized for a couple of days, um, which requires um, uh, our resources, um, a prolonged resources than we typically would have for a non-COVID patient. Um, and, it, and that's just here at uh, Tift Regional down at Southwell, our hospital it has a 95 bed nursing home. Um, and very recently um, we had, um, we were, we did a great job of keeping COVID out, but um, unfortunately it managed to find its way in there. Um, and so in addition to the 37 we have up here, we have about equal amounts down there in the nursing home. And so from a utilization and supply standpoint, um, that makes it challenging to be able to properly care for these patients and stay ahead of the game. And so um, as you can see from the screen, every time we go into a COVID patient room, whether it be in the ER or nursing home or on the floor, we have to wear a mask, shield or, or goggles, uh, a gown and gloves, and um, even though supply, logistics, and, and ch supply chain has improved since March, we still have, are, are struggling uh, maintaining levels of PPE. Uh, we've been able to stay ahead of the game, but um, as utilization continues to occur, so does the uh, supply utilization. Um, and every time we go in a patient room, whether they need a pillow, whether they need a meal or help uh, with their medications or to the bathroom or anything, we have to fully gown up. And so we are going through around 2,000 gowns a day. Um, which is significant um, and hospitals across the country are going through those at the same rate. And so um, at, we've been able, like I said, we've been able to stay ahead of the game, but as this continues and as the numbers continue to climb, um, our utilization is increasing and our uh, supplies on hand is, is dwindling. Um, and so I just want to remind everybody in the community how they can help uh, not only themselves, their family members, but uh, the hospital. Um, and the latest CDC recommendations um, are to wash your hands often, avoid close contact, so maintain that six feet, um, six feet distance if possible, cover your mouth and nose with a mask when around others, cover cough and sneezes, and then uh, clean and disinfect and monitor your health daily. Um, what we've seen on, on an outpatient basis is a lot of patients, or sorry, members of the community are asymptomatic, meaning they don't have any symptoms. Um, and that's why it's important to make sure you monitor your health because the symptoms when it first started was fever, uh, mostly fever, high temperatures, um, very obvious symptoms. But as the uh, virus has spread, um, especially in the warmer months when um, is spread a little quicker but less severe, the, the symptoms were harder to identify. And so even if you may be symptomatic, um, you for sure need to stay home, monitor your health daily. And then if you're asymptomatic, we, we ask that everybody wear masks out in public. So that way you may not know you're a carrier, but um, the mask is still protecting others from 
or reducing the risk of getting uh, COVID spread. Um, so that was kind of a brief summary. Um, does anybody have any questions? Do you see things getting worse over the next few weeks based on what you've seen right now? The general consensus at the hospital is things will maintain or get worse over the next couple of weeks um, just due to the nature of the quarter weather rolling in, the holidays coming in, um, that we do see things not getting better in the short term. Um, okay. We do expect to get the vaccine here either this week or next week um, that we'll be able to start rolling out for uh, healthcare workers. But as far as by the time we, for the time, until we get the vaccine readily available out into the community and public, I do think we're gonna struggle with um, containing the spread of COVID. There's, um, I mean, various states, counties across other states have, have seen drops when mask mandates were put in place. Alabama, for example, put one statewide and, and they saw the cases drop by 11%. Uh, South Carolina saw a 46% drop in those counties that had a mask mandate versus those that didn't. And I know that's what CDC says. So is the hospital recommending that everyone wear a mask when outside the, their house? Uh, we, we follow the CDC guidelines to a T um, at the hospital. And so if you're out in public, we do request that everybody wear a mask. Um, I do think when you're out in restaurants, if you're spaced appropriately, obviously you can't eat and wear a mask, but um, everybody wearing a mask um, in grocery stores, convenience stores, retail, I think that will greatly help the, help the health system and the county as a whole contain the spread. So we recommend following the CDC guidelines. What's the maximum capacity that the hospital can handle for COVID patients? Um, so we have a, a kind of an interesting mix. So the severe patients that require a ventilator have to be in our ICU, um, and that's 20 beds. And then our step-down unit, which is one level down from ICU, that is 12 beds. Um, and so I think we have the capacity to take upwards of 32 ventilated patients. Um, and then for the non-ventilated patients, like the general uh, patients that aren't super sick, but um, need to be observed and kept for a couple of days, we've uh, got a respiratory care unit that holds 17. Um, but right now we've surpassed that allotment and have patients kind of going to the next unit as overflow. Um, and so you know, during our peak in July, when testing kind of was not up to speed. Uh, we had a lot of COVID positives and then suspected. And so we had patients, we try to keep them as contained as possible, but um, we do have plans in place to be able to spread it throughout the hospital in a systematic way. But um, as far as capacity, um, we'll handle um, to the best of our ability any, co any patient, COVID or non-COVID, that comes to our hospital. All right. In our, um, I guess, what was it? Summer, was it June, July that we were at the peak? And the hospital had to, to, to make the difficult choice of deviating other patients. Are we at that level? Are we close to that level? Uh, we are close to that level. We've started having some early conversations if things don't change. How, how would we implement uh, going back to that? And kind of looking back what we did in the summer, is there anything we could have done differently, kind of doing a risk assessment? Um, and we're getting close to that point where we may have to start uh, diverting patients away from our health care, away from our community because we don't have the availability to take care of all, all the patients. Do you have any other questions, Wes? Uh, well, yeah, he actually answered the question that I had about the vaccine. So the vaccine that, that you're anticipated to get next week, uh, you're only going to be distributing that to the, the workforce? Uh, yeah, the um, so currently what's been approved and what's being distributed is for healthcare workers. Um, and so we have a prioritization list within our organization on who or there's uh, how, how to disperse that. We don't think we'll have enough for every employee to get it. And so um, obviously some of the people in the front lines working in the ER, I see um, the physicians um, who are dealing on a regular basis with these, with these patients would get first priority. Um, and then 
as other vaccines um, get approved in the market, I think that's when we'll be able to um, roll it out to more than just healthcare workers. But I believe we have been approved as a regional uh, distribution site. And so once we get the vaccines allotted to us, we can start distributing that to uh, the community and the surrounding areas. So what, picking up on those vaccines, I mean, what I've heard is today, you know, we're talking second quarter before we, I mean, really there's enough to, to get out into the general population kind of thing. Is that, you know, late, late spring? Uh, um, you know, it, the data or numbers change. I know Pfizer was the first one that got released last week and um, they, they ran into supply chain issues, so they didn't have as many produced as they would have liked to at this moment. And so I don't know with uh, Moderna or any of the other manufacturers what their supply challenges are. But um, my, from everything that I've read, I think summer would be a safe bet that we would have uh, enough readily available to uh, distribute to our communities. Okay. So, so this isn't going to happen Christmas, New Year's, January, and we're done. That's okay. Yeah, unfortunately, um, Pfizer, Moderna, and some of these other large uh, pharmaceutical companies are not only producing for the United States, but for the whole world right now. And so even though they're making 200 million vaccines, um, they're being shipped off to the UK, Canada, other areas. And the vaccine is a, is a two-shot vaccine. So you get, for Pfizer, you get uh, the first vaccine, and then 21, day, 21 days later, you have to get the second one. And so even though they have 200 million vaccines, really that's about 100 million different individuals that can receive it. Pete, you had a question? Yes, um, Alex, any uh, updated uh, communications from the governor's office about direction or change of, change of direction? Um, not that I'm aware of. I haven't heard anything recently. Um, I know uh, just other states, as by and large, are starting to do a lot more restrictions. Um, can't speak of what Governor Kent plans to do, but I know he was one of the more, I guess, less restrictive governors um, back in April and May when everything happened. I think Georgia was one of the first states to open back up. Um, and so I would imagine he is going to be one of the tail end people to put any strong restrictions in place um, if, if we have to get to that point. It's my understanding from speaking with a staff person in his office, there's no plan for a mass mandate for the state. Now, there is a call tomorrow, as um, many of you, I think I sent the email out to everyone, to the Georgia Municipal Association for the latest um, information on what's happening from a state standpoint. But that call will be tomorrow. So we don't have that information at this point in time. What he, what he has done, which was a little change from the beginning, was allow cities and counties, if, if the cases were 100 per 100,000 above that, then they do have the ability to do their own mask mandate. If I'm not mistaken, Rob, we looked at that in Tiff County, was it six, six, 600 or? We were beyond that threshold. Way, way, I mean, it was up in the either five or 600, something large. I mean, it was not even close. Um, I know Albany just went back over the 100 reinstituted a mask mandate to, with with the guidelines if it goes below the hundred then you take it off mm -hmm. uh, but you know when yeah um, you, you can't get any redder than what tip county is i don't think i i would never say never uh, but from you know my perspective um back in march and april when everything kind of hit us all at once and supply chain was the big driver behind a lot of the decisions um, we, the state and most states made a decision to channel a lot of businesses. And then as more data came in, as supply opened back up, they, re they were able to systematically reopen. And so, um, you know, my thought or the goal, I would hope, um, for the state of Georgia is if we ever get to the point where we have to shut down that he would, or we would do a systematic approach to sh closing things or doing certain, um, mitigations to prevent us from getting to that point. So, um, I, I do think uh, wearing a mask is one of the strong recommendations. Um, and, um, you know, from my perspective, if we ever get to the point where we have to shut businesses down and didn't in, invoke a mask mandate, then I think we're putting uh, the businesses and community kind of at a disadvantage because we didn't do it, certain steps leading up to that point to uh, reduce that risk. Alex, let me ask you this question. Um, <clears throat> 
Do you think that it is a lack of people understanding uh, the necessity for a mask, like promoting of masks? Or, you know, uh, the city of Tifton, we have several different avenues that we can, uh, you know, relate. And, and I don't know if we've done, uh, we, we've done a, a good job, I think, but we've not done as much as we probably we could. Uh, and getting partners with the Tifton, uh, regional folks and uh, maybe some folks from the county and the school system to help partner with us. Or do you think it's past that? You know, I mean, there's so much information out. I know you hear from the CDC, you hear from the Department of Health, we hear from so many different people. Um, you know, but the thing about it is, is people want to hear from folks that are local. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of the way I was tonight, uh, is that I wanted to hear from TIF Regional. I hear from the Department of Health and I hear from the CDC, but they're not in TIF. You know, you guys look at this stuff on a daily basis. And so, um, do you think if we were to up the ante in, in mass promotions and, and, and just do you think that would help or do you think it needs to be a little bit stronger now? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think I think a lot of it is I think we've been doing this for almost 10 months now um, and either people have already gotten COVID and don't think they need to wear a mask anymore or they've made it 10 months and I didn't get, I didn't get COVID, you know, I like my chances. I'm young, I'm healthy. Um, but I do think maybe a strong push or re-education would for sure benefit the community or in the area. Um, one thing that we're starting to real, one thing that's starting to happen um, is that people who caught COVID in March and April are starting to get it again. And so just because you got COVID one time, your antibodies, they say last about four months. And so since we're about 10 months, nine months into this, this whole process that um, people who got it early, their antibodies are, um, about faded and so um, people are catching COVID a second time and so um, and, I, and I don't know how well that's been communicated out and um, I know a couple of people friends of mine that you know had COVID and don't feel the need to wear a mask but um, the risk is still there even if you had had COVID and I think that may be something that um, would be a good uh, you know public health campaign to let people know. I want to make sure that our county commissioners have the opportunity to ask questions too. Um, so Melissa or Buck, do y'all have any questions? I'll ask something on the question of getting COVID more than once. Is that just a few cases? It seemed anecdotal to me as I read that y'all are finding that most of the people are getting it a second time. Mm -hmm. We've uh, uh, numerous cases. Or? Um, it's still kind of early to track. I know. Um, I know a coworker of mine who's caught it twice, and granted that could be anecdotally, but um, the the risk is there, um, and I, I do think as the colder months roll in, um, and as um, there's more gatherings, um, that I do think there's a higher risk of people uh, uh, getting it twice. And so, I, you know, I think I think right now it's still anecdotally, but I do think if we continue on the path that we're going, that it will become more of a consistency. I do have I hear the concern in the voice, and I also see the numbers. I understand that the government is not going to mandate wearing a mask. What can the city and the county do to help the hospital? Um, so I, I think the big thing is um, to stay vigilant. You know, just because you may have gotten COVID or COVID uh, or you haven't got COVID, um, and I know a lot of this has become uh, nationwide a big politicized um, um, issue. But the fact of the matter is that it's very real in our community um, and wearing a mask does help. Um, and while you may not find it relevant, but it, it, it protects not only, it, doesn't, it protects, if everybody wears a mask, um, it protects everybody around it. So you wear a mask to protect those around you, not necessarily to protect yourself. Um, and um, socially distancing is another large thing. Um, if you can avoid large crowds, if you could keep your distance, um, go out when necessary, not just, um, uh, and then, um, you know, I think those are the two main things. That's based off the CDC recommendations is social distance and then wear a mask. So I think those are the two things that, just from my perspective, um, we could do a better job in the community based off some observations. Vicki, did y'all have any questions? I know um, our chief, either our chiefs back, you know, I know that um, y'all as frontline workers and and um, as our firefighters and 
police and sheriff and EMS, EMS and everybody. Um, do y'all have any specific questions or anything while we have Alex here that, that he can answer for you and how you're conducting yourselves or just to get information? We're, I talk with them regular at the hospital. We're still calling mm -hmm. them. Our policy is we won't have any place for them at. Right. So. Okay. Adam, for the school system, did you have any specific questions or anything? I just want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to ask their questions. I mean, I, I, and I talked with uh, Chris Dorman uh, just a couple weeks ago. We, we talked fairly regular. And I, I talk with the Department of Public Health all the time. Right. So the, uh, some of the stuff I'm, I'm confused about, but I, I would agree that following the CDC and the DDH guidelines are, are absolutely what we need to be doing. Is, is it the hospital's position that we should require masks, uh, or is it the hospital's position that we should follow DPH and CDC guidelines? Because uh, I'm looking for clarity and how we make this information. I know that they're looking for clarity. Yes. Um, you know, um, I, I think a mask mandate would be the quickest way to get people to wear a mask in our community. I think strong uh, communication from the DPH and CDC will provide information, but I don't necessarily think many people would abide by that. I think we've come to a point where we may be too fatigued. Um, and so, you yeah. know, Personal, uh, um, I would say that anything that the community does benefits the, the hospital, and if that means that people wear are mandatory mandatorily wear a mask, then that would be uh, the hospital stance. Well, that's one of the things that we're considering. You know, this afternoon is um, should we implement a mask mandate for the city of Tifton? I don't know, has the, has the commission, I'm going to kind of put y'all on the spot, have y'all talked about anything like that? Okay. My concern, let me just go ahead and be the first one to voice concerns, is how do we enforce something like this? Um, if the city implements the mask mandate and the county does not, or the state does not, I feel like we're kind of, um, I don't feel like we're going to be effective. Um, I know that many of the stores and, and restaurants around town, uh, I shared this with everyone in an email, you know, have signs, that please wear your mask for the safety of our employees and our customers. And I've seen those very stores, um, you know, ask people who come in that don't have masks on to please wear a mask. And they just, the, you know, their patrons will just say no and go on in. And um, so my concern is, you know, how do you, how do you enforce, um, I've had some, Business people tell me, I don't care what y'all do. I'm not wearing a mask, and I'm not paying a fine, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna mandate this for me. So, you know, the concern is how do you, how do you enforce it? Um, I do agree with with the statements um, completely that you know, continuing to remind people, um, you know, what the what the safety benefits are of wearing a mask and washing your hands and distancing and all of the protocol that we're all aware of. I think we need to continue to remind, and I agree with you, I think people are just fatigued with this. Um, I just don't feel that it will be effective if it's not done on a statewide or at least a regional wide situation. Um, I know that our, um, our police department would be the ones to enforce this and um, you know, their, their hands are full with other issues that are happening in the community. So, uh, so those are my concerns. Um, I, I don't know. Um, Julie, let me, uh, there's something I read on Facebook. Now, you know, not a lot of things you're supposed to get off of Facebook, but this really <laughs> intrigued me. Um, the shopping cart theory, have you ever heard of that? That the, there's germs on the shopping cart? No, no, no. The shopping cart theory is a theory of self-governing. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's no penalty if you don't put this, the shopping cart up into the thing. Okay. And, and, then, and then there's, there's no, um, um, you know, you don't get no incentive to put it up as well. You do it for courtesy right of, the, of, of other shoppers. Right. And you also do it for the courtesy of the business not to have to replace the shopping cart. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you have people who are not going to put the shopping cart up no matter what. And then you're going to have people that are going to do it. Um, I think this is a case that, that's going to fall into that shopping cart theory. I don't think you can place a, a, a penalty or a fine or anything like that on people. 
it's really just, and I guess what I'm suggesting is I hear that what the hospital says is that we up the promotion of masks because there is no way to enforce a mandate. Uh, and we, we basically just, you know, we, we, we publicize it with the school. We give folks with the school uh, district that's involved. We give people with the county commission. We get business owners that, um, who, are, who, who would help us, you know, get the message out and say, hey, listen, wearing masks uh, is going to help, I guess, with the curve, so to speak. And that's the best route to go, um, in my opinion. But that's, that's just me. Well, and Mayor, I, I, I hear you. I, I guess, number one, it could be enforced. I mean, the, the governor has given us the ability to enforce it if we want to. He's got it in his, in his order that you can do a, a citation. Um, but sometimes you have to lead. I personally think we're here to lead, not follow. And we stepped out and did the public buildings. The county saw fit to come along and, and do it as well. Um, and so because we don't want to be the only ones, I don't think there's a reason not to do it. Um, and I think we've gone way beyond what people will do what they need to do. This, this is life and death. Tiff County is the reddest of the red. Now we can sit here and go tell people again, we'll go wear your mask. Well, okay. You see the same people I see that the sign at Lowe's and Lawrence says put a mask on and they just look at it and then they go. They don't care. But they don't want somebody to tell them what to do. I can appreciate that business owner. If he doesn't want people to wear masks, that's certainly his right. But I can tell you, he's losing some business because I've had people all the time tell me they are not going to go downtown and shop in a store where they know there aren't masks and that kind of thing. They're going to sit at home and order online and it's delivered. So they can sit there and I'm not going to wear them. Okay, that's your, that's your choice. Well, people that don't want to go in stores where there's no mask have a choice of where they spend their money. You all know safety is the thing I talk about all the time. Well, economics around and the business is, is the next thing. It would be a benefit, I think, to the businesses downtown and everywhere if there was a mask mandate and somebody that we knew, if you were going to go in the store, they were going to wear masks. I had somebody told me the other day they went to two biddies on Tift Avenue, and I said, well, were there masks? Three customers in there, all three of them had masks. I said, what about employees? The employee had a mask. They were fine going in there. So they, they went in there and spent money. And they were safe and weren't risk at killing somebody else. So this has gone beyond let's talk about it and let's tell them they should do this. But a mask mandate, there are people that were still not going to do it. Ah, George, they're not going to do it. But there are other people that say, okay, this, this is now the law, this is the ordinance for why to try to get this thing down, and they will follow it. And even if we get half of the, of the bunch that's not doing it, we've reduced the risk by that much. But the, hosp the hospital is going to be overrun. I mean, I too talked to Chris Dorman last week. The hospital is going to be overrun. The hospital is having shortages of PPE. I mean, there's the level of, okay, they run out and maybe might be later that day. I mean, this is absolutely real. And everything you read and everything you hear is masked work. And it should not, I'm sorry, my view of the shopping cart is the same thing. When he said everybody's going to do the right thing, the governor said, and I appreciate that. Well, look at the parking lot of Walmart, and you can see the shopping carts everywhere, so people aren't going to do the right thing, or they'd put their dang shopping carts up. So we know that. But, you know, the legislature passed a cell phone law where you can't use a cell phone. Why? Because people are dying. Now, that's difficult to enforce, but they still did it. And there's a lot of people that were holding cell phones before that now, because it's a law and they might get caught, aren't holding them. And that's, I mean, I just think to sit back with the numbers and, and what Vicki sent out the other day from the Department of Public Health and it's tip and tip county in the red. And I mean, it's just at how serious this is, which is the reason I, you know, it, it's just, it, it's time for us like we did the shutdown, and that is the last thing I want to do. I would never vote at this point unless it's dramatic having a shutdown. This will stop us from having reached that level 
where the hospital is sending people, and you heard Alex say, we're on the verge of sending people somewhere else. So we're going to do some more education. Well, we've got to do that in addition to it. We don't need our people being sent off to another hospital. Can someone explain to me how this would be enforced, Chief? I don't know. I mean, have y'all talked about if, if the mask mandate is put in place by the city of Tifton, how is it enforced? That's, <laughs> that's what I'm wondering as I'm standing here because even me standing working part time at the mall and standing at the door of TJ Maxx yesterday, I saw four people cuss the girl out right here at the door because she told them she had to have on a mask. And people get violent mm -hmm. when they start talking. One man said, I'm not putting on a GD mask. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, you're not going to muzzle me. So I, I've got to figure out how we can do that without our use of forces going up or things like that. How, how can I talk to them or how can the officers talk to them to get them to wear the mask and us not get into uh, argument with them or something like that? Or do we, they just say no, do we just um, has anybody reached out to Albany and see how they enforce the mask mandate that they have, our neighbors that were in the red? I'm not interested in following anything Albany's doing. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking, is that, has anybody asked that question to the chief over there? Have you asked him or have we checked in to see how they enforce their mask mandate? Uh, I do not know how they enforce it. Uh, I do know there's what, what Steve was saying is that according to the governor's executive order, you know, prior to issuing any type of citation, uh, you know, it's, you know, you have to make reasonable efforts to try to get that person to comply. Uh, so, you know, from an enforcement standpoint, as I perceive it, it would be like anything else, you know, first you, you know, issue the warning, try to get someone to comply, it also says that they don't, they can't afford a mask or supply a mask. But once you get beyond that point and you get somebody who just says, I'm not going to wear a mask, then you issue a citation and they come to this report. <clears throat> but I think that uh, the maximum fine under the executive order is $50. Uh, so that's kind of where, where we go. Well, we also have in this sample ordinance that you provided, Rob, there's, there are lots of reasons why someone <laughs> Um, would not have to wear a mask. That's right. And so, I just, again, I, I you know, I, I hear, this is me personally, I'm just one vote. I hear the, um, I hear the concern, I, I understand the concern, I get it, I totally, completely get it. Um, I've known many people who've had COVID, I've known several people who've passed away, unfortunately, from COVID. Um, I just don't know that this is the right thing for our community if there's not at least, again, regional or at least county support. And I know y'all haven't had your meeting. You haven't had a chance to discuss that. And I, I get that. Uh, my concern is, you know, how does it impact? Um, there are so many places within our community that you don't know where the city limit line is. And I use Highway 82 as an example. So if I want to go fill up a gas at one gas station on the, on the um, south side of, of Highway 82, then I need to wear a mask, but I can go across the street and I don't have to, I'm just using an example of Tiff County didn't implement, and, you know, I don't have to over there. So am I really protecting anybody in the city of Tifton by me asking for a mask mandate if there's no consistency from place to place? That's my concern. Um, are we really being effective how do we let people that are, you know, we're very fortunate here in Tipton to have the interstate and highways all running. We, 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 you know, we tout that at every chance with tourism and that kind of thing. How do we let people that aren't citizens of this community know that you're required to wear a mask when you're in our town? Um, so there, these are all questions. And who do I call? And let's say this is implemented. And I go to, um, I know you mentioned Walmart a minute ago, I go to Walmart and I see someone's not wearing a mask. Do so I call 911 for that? Is that what the protocol is and I'm, I'm not trying to be flippant I'm just acting because I don't know what the answers are so I want well, so you get all those. somebody would have that ability if they wanted to I mean I don't foresee I can't envision the chief sending his officers into these various stores looking for 
for you know, violators of, of this. My, my hope is that, that there will be some that because it is now an ordinance that, that they will take part. And my hope is that our, our two friends from, from the county commission can go back and say that the city is, is trying to do something. You know, in order to make this work for all of Tiff County, we need to follow up and, and be a partner and, and let's try to, to lower this in, in Tiff County. Now, I think, Rob said, you gotta, if you don't want to do the mask in the store, you can put a sign up. That's why I wanted, I wanted to clarify that. Mm -hmm. you know, if a store does not want to enforce the mandate while their customer's in the store, then they can post a sign on the front of the door saying that you know, we do not consent to the enforcement of the, uh, of the mask requirement. If you don't post a sign, then yeah. assume that you do. Then why have? I know that's yeah, my I mean, point. That that's so, the that's point. point. I mean, I think that if you have somebody who is shopping and they only want to shop at the store that requires the masks, then if the, if the sign's not on the door, you know they require the well, masks. Let me ask you. Not on the door, then they know if you go into that store, you may be exposed to folks. So then this goes back to what I was talking about with promotion. If you could get the Merchants Association, you could get the Downtown Development Authority, you could get maybe the Chamber of Commerce to really kind of, hey, help discuss, you know, hey, listen, here's an opportunity. You can put these, you can ask for, for masks or not, you know, I mean, hell, well, you, wait, 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 with, with all due respect, the Tips and Merchants Association and the DDA, we had a festival a week ago or two weeks ago. How many masks were in existence? The Chamber of Commerce hosted their, their Christmas party, and I didn't go because I knew what was going to happen. My understanding that there was 30 plus people and there was two or three of y'all with masks or something in, in a closed room. I mean, come on. I mean, this, this is, so they're going to promote this? I've got a question. I don't know if it's for Rob or for the Chief. You'd mentioned, um, well, you see TJ Maxx, because we talked about our friends at TJ Maxx who has a sign out front that says that you must wear a mask before you enter this facility or public for several that do. And then someone decides not to. That's private property, is it not? I mean, can you not set the rules of what you want on your private property and prohibit that person from entering if that's what you choose to do? Is that a fair statement? Basically, you could uh, call them a trespasser. Uh -huh. You know, if somebody comes on your property and you ask them to leave and they don't leave, that's a trespass. Okay. So if somebody came into the store that requires masks, the owner of that property says you have to leave and they don't leave, then that's then a trespass. See, that, I guess that's, I don't see that creating this ordinance. And again, I'm just one voice, voice and one vote. It seems like we've got that now. And even in this ordinance, with the ability to say, I'm going to post a sign that masks are not required here, we're going back to pre ordinance behavior if this is not approved. And, you know, I just want to make sure I get a little clarification. Okay. You know, the, you know, the mask ordinance only applies to individuals, uh -huh. it doesn't apply to businesses. So that means that if, a, if you have a customer, that comes into your business not wearing a mask and there's a mask mandate, that's imposed against the individual. Not so the there's no penalty, you know, for any businesses or entities. Uh, this is just strictly as to each individual. But, but you're saying this ordinance, I can put a sign on my door that says, I choose not to abide by the ordinance, therefore masks are not required in my facility. But that's the governor's way of letting businesses out. I mean, let's face it, that's the governor's requirement. So, so if I'm having a barbecue at my house, do, and I invite the neighbor over, do I have to wear a mask with my neighbor? This isn't residences. That, no, it doesn't apply to residences, but it does apply to gatherings. Uh, and that's how Let the train go by. Of how many people? How many people? Ten? 50. 50 people. Oh, well, I will never have that. <laughs> I think Chief Hyman to come to my house and have 50 people. But we're not getting into res We're not trying to put a mask mandate out for residences. This, this is to try to s slow this thing down and not have the hospital completely overrun. And to the mayor, well, I absolutely understand and I, I agree and know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. 
but to not do something is letting the people, the citizens of Tipton down. And sometimes you have to make a hard decision and it's gonna tick off maybe one half, but if it saves one life, then by George, it was, it was worth it for these people that now will wear a mask because the city said, hey, you know, there's the ability if, if somebody wanted to get tough, and that's all I'm. That's all I'm saying. It, 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 it. Just so I can uh, answer the question a little bit clearer, Wes. It does not apply to residential properties. People are residential properties, but you, as a you know, property owner, can say, "I want to enforce the ordinance on my property." So you have the ability to make it apply. Come on, come on. It doesn't generally apply to residential properties. Come on, bro. Come, come on. on. Now that's, it's just, that, that's, can I just, I'll add my two Please. cents. I mean, it's our job to, you know, carry out the orders. If you want to march, we'll march. Uh, going with this, without it. And I feel we need to do something too, just the same. But I think Commissioner Hughes just said something very uh, remindful is that we all need to pull together. We being the school, city, county, other two cities to help support the hospital slow this down. Mm -hmm. I think Vice Mayor Ellers said it perfectly I think we have done a third of what the PR and getting the word out the neighbors should be telling neighbors hey if we're gonna barbecue let's put the mask on the neighbors should be telling the businesses hey we need to mask we need to do this because if I'm not mistaken if we cause conflict more conflict more businesses and more entities the school is still in the green so if we send mixed signals across the line without any validation or without us tandemly doing this we could be causing some major panic and meltdown uh, with, with, with our city. So this is the first red, I have not seen this yet. Uh, and if you want to put it into, into motion, then we have some footwork to do. Uh, but if, if you give us one week until the meeting on Monday, uh, that we could reach out to the partners to at least share this, to say, hey, this is what we're talking about. At least let, let me digest this with some staff to make sure I could I could uphold this, I could deliver if you put it into place, but I certainly want us to do this in a, in a timely fashion because I, personally I think we need to do something, but no, we need to do it, and we need to do it, it right, and I don't know what right is, but. That makes the most sense to me. I'm, I'm looking at Melissa and she's nodding her head. I know that the commissioners will, will definitely talk about that. I know Adam has been, you know, very willing to, um, to cooperate with, you know, with our school system in any way possible, but I, I feel if, we, again, it's just me, if we pass this right now, I think it's a knee-jerk reaction that we've not, um, that we've not, I, I agree with you, Pete, I think that will we'll, we'll <coughs> cause more confusion than if we have all the partners at the table and move forward um, in whatever the partners feel is the best route for the community. I think we need Tata and Omega, we need Tim County, we need school, uh, potentially representatives for a hospital. I just. Um, that being said, anyone that, that would like to make a motion, you know, concerning this can certainly do but, so at any time. Mayor, can I just, but I, I want to, but I, I want to commend um, Commissioner Folk, yes. uh, Councilman Folk, because yes. as leaders, uh, th this, is, this, this is not something that we need to stand on the sidelines about. Right. I, I completely concur with that. Right. And uh, th this is a tough time because of what leadership and what, the, you know, what we're dealing with as a, as a really as a country. So it, it's, it is time. I will add on to that there, Pete, is that we heard from Alex. The hospital uh, is near diversion. Uh, they're limited to divert. That's not a good thing. Uh, he made a comment that, you know, whatever we do that helps the hospital is the hospital's position, whether it be pr extending promotion of that or it's going uh, to a mask mandate. So, you know, whatever we decide to do is going to help the hospital is, is is what we're here to do. You know, I think right. not doing anything, either we're gonna uh, ramp up promotion right. uh, at the least, or we go to um, a more stronger approach with a mask mandate. But again, until we well, have um, until we have the other municipalities and our county, I think, going in the same direction, not say that they're not, but they've just not had the opportunity to discuss that yet. I don't think anything that we do with regard to a mandate will be effective. I think it'll just be confusing. But well, I, I, I disagree with confusing I, respectfully. But you know what, Mr. Hathaway does with the school. He's on top of it as far as the school system goes. I mean, he knows what metrics he's looking at. He's got a guideline of 
green, what, that's, that's different from the city of Tifton, in my view. But if, you know, the county commissioners got the same email last week from Vicki that talked about DPH. Now, whether they're gonna talk about it tonight, I don't know if it's on their agenda or not. But they, you know, it, time is of the essence. Now, we can wait here, and a week from now, we can talk about it, we can get everybody together, and in two weeks, and I do this and that, and by then, we're diverting, and we've got all these people, and, and they say, why didn't you do something? And if we think that there, there's even two people in Tip County that don't know about wearing a mask, I'll give you $100. But you got a lot of people who don't wear a mask because they say, well, I've already got it. I don't, I'm not going to get it again. I think that type of language or that type of information needs to and be. And we can do that in, in addition to, but to delay, to delay. I mean, we know what the issues are. Nothing's going to change a week from now. Nothing's going to change two weeks from now on, on these opinions, except more people are going to be in the hospital and we'll start diverting and we're going to sit back and say, well, we really should have done something because maybe we would have kept 10 people out of the hospital. And maybe we wouldn't be diverting people. And there's going to be uproar. But I think it'd be the, the our county commissioners, if they can say, the city of Tifton is taking action because here's the numbers that we're in red. Our own EMA director you know, has put this email out from DPH that something has to happen. We're at the highest level. We are five times the level that the governor set as the base minimum, at least five times what he put out there. We're not sitting here at 105 when he says 100 cases. No, we are five times that. I mean, it's just, I, yes, ma'am. Well, please, please go to the county commission and say that, and I think you'll have support from, from the and, two that are here. Not only then is your family member in the hospital and you can't go up there and be with them, now they're seven, eight, nine, ten hours away. It, it, and, and that, thank, that's thank you. that I don't think the public understands. And if we can stop one from having to be or five from having to be diverted up to Knoxville or wherever, we took action. Do we know for sure it's going to, no, but we took some action for the safety of the people of Tifton. We can't do all of Tift County, but I'm sure our two friends are going to go back and say, the city of Tifton took action. We need to follow. Let's get this thing down because it's five times what the governor said. And it, what, what does it, does it hurt? Yeah, we can't go in there. We're not going to, we're, we're not going to go in and, and start finding everybody and this and that. But it will, that in itself will make people think, wait a minute, this, this is serious. That's in addition, you get out the, more, the rest of the information, this is the reason we're doing it. This is why. We put in there, the hospital's close to diversion. Do you want your family member to be eight hours away? No, you don't. So you either stay home or you go where they're wearing masks so your family member isn't going away. Did you have COVID four months ago? Guess what? We now understand you are, you're back in the pool again. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a plus. This is why we're doing it with this information. But we can't wait. We cannot wait. And Does anyone have any more questions? I know that you have a, the county commissioners have a very important meeting tonight at 6, and so I want to make sure we get you out um, in plenty of time. Um, so, but I also want to make sure that while we have Alex here, any other questions that anyone might have, um, we can, can direct to Alex. Does anyone else have any other questions of Alex at this point in time? I just want to comment based off uh, what that comment. Um, I checked with some other hospitals. I believe Coffee Regional, Crisp Regional, and Dormany are already on diversion. So um, we're accepting those patients from those different areas. From those other areas. Okay. And so so the hospital is accepting from other areas oh not all. i mean some of them may go to other hospitals right now um, but like to that point is when we get to a certain level it's we transfer patients wherever we, 
wherever there's a facility that will accept them. Um, and we're getting close to uh, capacity, and I believe Phoebe is getting close as well. Okay, so. Even with mass mandates. So, uh, so we've heard that hospitals getting close to being full, and you're going to diverge, and you're going to start sending people off, right? Okay. People are still dying. Okay. Um, the hospitals around us, mask or no mask, people are still dying and getting sick, right? Okay. Um, a mask is a chance to save a life, right? Is that what you're telling me? And the CDC. Okay. If we wear a mask, it's a potential that we keep saving lives and we keep businesses open and tipping, right? School as well, right? Everybody that's sitting in this room, right? But we have a mask mandate for city buildings. That's fine. But at the end of the day, regardless, we can have a powwow meeting. The county still can choose to have a mask or not have a mask. The school can still do what they want to do. I mean, at the end of the day, we can either like they say, show some effort. Because I mean, I'm not playing a, I'm not gonna play a politic game in it. I'm not gonna play a big boy game that, oh, I mean, I'm gonna wear a mask or whatever. Because it's not about that. I can walk in Lowe's, I can walk in TJ Maxx and snatch my mask off, I can cuss Hyman out. I can cuss my mama out, anybody, because I don't wanna wear a mask. But just because of that, that cussing out that I gave that person, well, maybe that next person that I run past, I caught them a virus and I, I killed that one with that same cuss word. I don't care. I don't have a, nobody on my head. I don't have a, a party that I'm playing with. We all sitting here in the same room and we playing with the same doggone virus. So you play with the mask or without the mask, you're playing with the same virus. It's been here, it's still here. The man from Southwell came here, he's telling everybody in Tifton that it's still here and it ain't going nowhere. So you keep sitting here and you keep playing with it if you want to. I'm sick of, we have been sitting grown men and women talking about a doggone mask. We've been wearing one all year. What does it matter? It saves a life. I don't care what the CDC say, what anybody else say. Just put on the dog on mask. If you put in the dang on, uh, the, whatever this is, put it in there. If they don't want to wear it, don't let them wear it. But at least we try. You can be mad, you can be sad. You can, you can say, oh, well, he playing this game, he playing that game. He playing with the big boy Kemp, he playing with the big boy Trump, he playing with Biden, he playing with whoever. Who cares? It saves a life. Who cares? If I go in there, they don't want you to pay to put on no mask, then who cares? Don't put on the mask. If the Tip County school system say they ain't gonna make no teachers wear no mask, who cares? That's their fault. But as a city of Tipton, that's our chance to step up. Why do we need a mandate to require our citizens to step up? Well, that's, I guess that's we, tried, we tried that in the beginning. We had our horse and pony show. We did a video. Jack stood out there. I stood out there and put it, told everybody to put on a mask. It, MJ, I wouldn't call it a dog and pony show. That's insulting. Well, but I'm saying so, it's the same thing. It's just, no, it's, 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 it's going to be the same PR. Okay, the, CDC, well, the CDC has the same things on there. Okay, well, let's do Every this. Day. We've got to get these guys out to this other meeting. Board of Information, Mayor. If anyone would like to make a motion, I'll take that accept a motion at before this I, Before I make one, just a point of information, a comment about Phoebe and, and, and Albany has the mask. They just reinstituted it because they had dropped below the 100 per 100,000. And the trigger in there, which is the same trigger that's going to be, would be in here, is when you get above what the governor says, he allows you to make it, it goes back into effect. So that's why they did. And so what's happening? They didn't get five, five times. They only went over 100 a little bit. So with that being said, I make a motion that we approve this ordinance with the mask mandate 
when we get to the, what the governor said, 100 per 100,000, it will automatically come off and we'll follow everything else in there. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. So we have a motion second. Is there any further discussion? I mean, guys, I, I, do we not think that we need to give staff an opportunity to read over this? I mean, we got this at what, three? You have a motion on the floor. 345? We need to vote for the motion. Just for time of notification, basically what's in this ordinance and tracks, the governor's executive order back in August. So what you basically see in this ordinance is really the governor's executive order uh, back in August as far as allowing the city to pass the man, uh, pass the requirement, and also then provide for the exceptions to that. Can I, let me get an opportunity to sit here and read through this because I, I mean, I got it at 345 and you're asking me to make a dead gun well, vote on we it. Have, okay, well, we have a motion on the floor and we have a second. So we do need to address that motion. So I'll, um, you can question just at your discussion. I mean, I'm more curious about the enforcement of this ordinance. Okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. We've had some discussion. I'll talk to the vote. All those in favor wait of minute, the- Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on there. Hold Wes, on. are you done yeah. with your discussion? I, I'm still reading. I'm, I'm wanting to read the violation section okay. uh, of this ordinance. I mean, like I said, we got it at 345. Our meeting was at 430. No, sir, we're still here. Can you no, hear us? No, we're, we're, we're taking time to read the ordinance. Okay. So if a person violating this ordinance refuses or fails to comply with this ordinance after being given a warning pursuant to the subparagraph one of this paragraph, then the person may be subject to a civil penalty of not more than $25 for the first offense and not more than $50 for the second offense or any subsequent offenses. Keyword may. Would, would the council matter if we struck the, the uh... Well, now you're changing the motion. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just for discussion purposes. What's that? Striking the monetary penalty, even though it says may, just striking that section completely, which is section two. It looks like pair or uh, F two. I mean, uh, that section that I just read. Because if you can have a person that just puts a sign up there that says I'm not going to abide by the thing, then that know, then it's. Well, I understand that. Then they won't go in there and they're not going to be subject to it. Or, or if they say they have a religious reason, or if they say they have a health reason, or if they say they have any other reason that they don't want to abide by it, in essence, they don't have to abide by it. All right, I'm good. Okay. Well, right, can so we strike that? It is, has everyone had all the discussion that you want before I talk to the vote? Can I amend the motion to strike that penalty? You can't I, I can make a motion I to think, accept the agreement is, as is with striking the civil penalty part of it. Right? That's my motion. So, so I'm amending the original motion to strike out the civil penalty. Section two. No. Section two of that of that. It'd be so I you guess paragraph know. F section or number two. Okay. So, so you don't want to have a civil penalty at all. That's right. All right, so just so we can keep things kind of straight, we've got a motion to amend the main motion uh, to strike from the ordinance uh subparagraph uh, sub F two. So that we'll need a, a second on that. Motion to amend the main motion. Is 
strike subparagraph F2 of the ordinance. There being no second. That's the last second. Yes. Okay, so we're back to the original motion. Uh, which was made by Councilman Folk and then the second by Councilman Hawk to accept this mandate uh, for the mask ordinance um, to go into effect immediately. Pardon? This would go into effect immediately. Yes. yes. All right. Any is other there a time? Sorry? Is there a time that they have to put signs up? That kind of thing? No. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. All right, so Johnny, you said aye? Yes. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a mass mandate. It was a three to two vote, and um, good luck, Chief, enforcing that. And um, do we have anything else on the agenda? We do not. The meeting is adjourned.